Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Good morning. This is Lori Smith on Blog Talk Radio. It is 6 o'clock here in the morning, Calgary, Alberta, um, Wednesday morning, October the 20th. I'm happy to be here. Uh, this is One Child Abuse Survivor to Another, and we're on for 30 minutes. It's a live internet streaming radio broadcast from blogtalkradio.com. And chat room is open if anybody's awake and wants to sit in there. And I pop the link in there to uh, the angerresources.com, the website that we've been talking about for a few weeks. And um, I wanted to finish off looking at uh, some of the... Some of the, how can we tell if our anger is becoming a problem for us? Some of the information that um, Dave Decker and Michael Obsatz have there. And, um, yeah, I'm just happy to be able to continue to do these shows. I'm learning a lot from this. It sure is helping me to make sense of uh, why I behave the way that I do, why, why I behave the way that I did sort of thing as far as, uh, you know, anger issues and go. So I'm, I'm actually finding this very helpful. I hope other people are too. So I'm not a professional counselor or therapist. I have no certificates in those areas. You know, I'm just a private citizen paying to do my own blog talk shows. Um, I say this on every show because it's really important. Somebody might tune in for the first time and think I'm a counselor or a therapist or something. And um, You know, I'm just a private person and and, a survivor. So working through my healing journey, right? And I just wanted to be one more voice out here for people. It was important for me to get, I guess I really wanted to go public with my story, and I guess the reason being is that I thought, you know, before I actually went, uh, started writing my blog last October, um, so it's been a year actually that I went public with my story. Um, I wrote a blog called "Not So Fond Memories: Growing Up in an Abusive Home," and I would come home from work and write these chapters, you know, just as they would come out, and I'd just post them. I wouldn't even, uh, I didn't edit them. I didn't go back and change them. I just, I just wrote it and put it out there, and for everybody to see. And it, um, it was great because I, before that, I had been keeping this all in and uh, thinking, oh my God, I'm going to go to my grave with this information. And what was bothering me was the fact that my brothers. Um, had gone to their graves. Two of my brothers went to their graves and, and with no one knowing how they grew up and what they went through as young teenagers and what they went through in their adult lives with the problems that um, they, they had such a hard time dealing with life because of what had happened to them as growing up in the home that I grew up in. So I thought, man, I have to be a voice for them and I have to, you know, I have to, you know, for my own self, um, tell my story so that, you know, I can get this out because it was really destroying me to 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 keep it in, right? So I had to get my story out there, and so that's kind of what pr- prompted me to do this. And um, but not Blog Talk Radio. I was listening to um, last year, just before like November, when I started my Blog Talk Radio last November. I was listening to Gail Crabtree's Voices of Hope, and um, I had just clicked on a link, I saw what she was doing and listened to her show and thought, this is great. So I clicked on the Create Your Own Show just to see what it's all about. And before I knew it, I had a blog talk radio program. And so I thought, yeah, I could do one or two shows a week and, you know, go from there. So I didn't, I had no idea how many shows I'd be doing or what, you know, how long I would be doing them. And I really wanted to see if I could go a year after I got into it. I thought, well, I'll see if I can, you know, maintain a uh, a show for a year. <clears throat> so, you know, next month will be a year and I appreciate everybody who's tuning in. Thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, I'm not a professional counselor, therapist, or anything like that. You have to listen at your own discretion. The topics of abuse are very sensitive, and a lot of people are very, find it very hard to listen to. And I, like myself, I, I grew up in this, so like, and and I've been thinking about it and dealing with it my whole life. So it's not like, for me, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't affect me like it might somebody else who has not done any thinking about it or had to deal with it, or, you know, or maybe just a survivor who has just started their healing journey and uh, some of this information could trigger you so you have to listen at your own discretion be very careful what you're listening to we should all know what's good for us to listen to and uh, you know really think about things and and uh, make the right decisions for ourselves right and also if you're a young person under the age of 18 i just have you ask that you have permission to listen to my shows it's ultimately about stopping child abuse and child abuse survivor issues but you know, there's a lot of adult content on my shows, and I just think young people should be protected at all times. So, you you know, you need to stay safe. You need to find out how to keep yourself safe when you're online. And if you have someone listen to the show with you who's older, they can kind of help you decide whether you should be listening to it or not, because I don't know how young the people are who are listening to my show. And um, they can help you if you have questions, right? Because some of this stuff is just not talked about mainstream, that's for sure. Uh, a lot of this stuff, nobody's talking about it because it's very painful. It's very, a lot of people just want to keep it very, very private. But 
The whole issue of child abuse is if we keep it private, no one will know about it, and then we won't be able to stop it and prevent it. Um, and the whole issue of adult survivor issues, if we keep it all silent, then uh, it just seems to me that silence is the issue here. You know, um, silence. Uh, abusers always want to keep uh, abuse. Um, um, they want to keep everybody silent. They want to keep their victims silent. They want to keep everybody silent because they want to continue doing what they're doing, right? Abusers, and they certainly don't want to get busted or caught. And uh, society wants to keep it silent because it's a very ugly topic. Who wants to talk about this except for people who have been in it or who are interested in trying to stop child abuse? Um, the rest of the world just wants to go on about their business, and I mean, that's understandable. But the rest of the world, we need their we need their voices too, right? And what we don't know about, how are we going to fix? You know, I was talking about that last night on Dreamcatchers Talk Radio because I'm one of the hosts on there as well most of the week. And with Elizabeth Brawley and Donna Shear right now. And um, we all three co-host the uh, Dreamcatchers Talk Radio here on Blog Talk Radio. And we were talking about that last night. And, you know, I was just, it, it's its absolutely crazy. It's just, uh, you know, if, 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 if there's people out there supporting cancer research, uh, hey, let's stop cancer. Let's let's win the fight against cancer. Let's um, find a cure for cancer. Hey, I'm all for it. I lost a sister to cancer, and I have I, lo- I got lots of friends who have are like two, three times survivors of cancer. Um, I'm all for promoting the uh, you know the the finding the cure myself. Um, whole issue being is that we're no different what we're doing uh, as far as people who are speaking out against abuse. Uh, and standing up and saying, "Hey, we got to find a, a way to stop this. We got to find a way to prevent this." It's the same thing. It's the same thing as a cancer. Uh, someone who's advocating to stop, you know, and prevent cancers. We're doing the exact same thing. It's just that child abuse is so incredibly ugly and disgraceful because people know it's happening in their own homes and it's by the abuser's choice. Um, so no, you know, you won't hear a whole lot of people talking about child abuse on their lunch breaks, and so. I decided to be one more voice and just uh and and talk about it and spend the rest of my life talking about it. I don't you know it doesn't bother me that some people might be offended and and whatever child abuse offends me. It offends me greatly. And it offends me that I had to go through what I had to go through. It offends me that nobody cared and nobody got me any help. Uh it offends me that I was left to try to make a to try to make something out of my life with absolutely no support. Um it offends me that these kids out here right now are being abused. And uh, no one cares. That offends me. You know, I don't care if people are offended by what I'm doing. I really don't. Um, there's a bigger issue at hand, and that is that children are dying, and that children are losing their lives, and they're and they're they're losing their innocence, they're losing their childhoods, and all because an abuser decides what they're going to do that, to that child. They make a decision, a daily decision, uh, whether or not to hurt that child. It makes me sick to my stomach. And so, you know, hey, I'm one more voice, and uh, that's why I'm, I'm so thankful for everybody who's tuning in, and I appreciate it. Um, but I, I don't have no plans on shutting up, right? So we'll just keep moving on, and uh, I want to look at this anger resources information here. I want to finish up this one section. This is really interesting stuff here. I think this is kind of where it's all at as far as, you know, is your anger a problem for you or others? And this was written by Dave Decker, and we were looking at this yesterday, and it's a section where, you know, talking about these different distortions of, of anger and, and how could it be? It can be a problem in our lives. It's like when it occurs too frequently, when it lasts too long, we went through that. When the intensity is too great, when it disrupts relations, when it interferes with getting things done or creates problems for you on the job, uh, when it restricts your ability to have fun and relax, this is when we know anger is a problem, right? When it become when it begins to create physical symptoms, uh, when it leads to guilt, remorse, shame, and low self-esteem, when it leads to throwing, hitting, or breaking things, um, when it leads to emotional, verbal, physical, and sexual abuse, and when it leads to legal consequences. And uh, so we're going to continue talking about that. I We left off at the section that says... Um, uh, when it begins to create physical symptoms. And uh, that's the next portion, so we'll pick up right there. And I'll just read right from the webpage, www.angerresources.com, A-N-G-E-R-E-S-O-U-R-C-E-S.com, angerresources.com. And it says, um, intense anger takes an enormous toll on your physical health and well-being. You can actually create significant physical damage by developing headaches, stomach upset, chest pain, back aches, and even major cardiovascular problems like heart attacks and strokes. Um, so I guess, you know, anger manifested, um, you know, anytime, any, I guess any anybody 
who experiences that intense anger and, and stays in it long enough, it, it can affect your physical well-being. And I believe that because my mom, um, my mom's physical well-being was really a, at risk all the time. And um, because she was so angry, it would push her over the edge and physically as well. So she would she would get so angry that because um, she was she was always having strokes, mini strokes, and um, she had she was uh, well she had congestive heart failure, um, con- uh, heart disease, and uh, she had uh, all kinds of problems with her intestines and hernias, and she had cardiovascular problems like you wouldn't believe. Her legs used to burst. She had uh, she had issues with her blood pressure, thyroid, and everything, and like she'd be walking down the walking in somewhere in a store or something down the aisle, and her legs would just burst, and blood would just be pouring out everywhere. She would like hemorrhage, and she was just a mess. And um, you know, it's pretty sad. And I, I used to I used to feel so bad for her because her physical well being was so uh, fragile. You know, yet she was always in this state of rage, a state of anger, state of uh, complete, you know. I don't know. It just uh, she she was just such an angry woman. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even when she was she would sometimes relax, you know, but but it would just it wouldn't even take anything to push her back over the edge. And that's the thing because she was always on the edge of this whole anger issue, you know. She was just mad and angry. And um it used to affect her physically. And we used to get her to try to calm down, you know what I mean? Cuz sometimes she would be losing it. I talked about on that on the show yesterday was you know, just stupid things like my dad turning a tap off and on, right? Her blood pressure was so bad, like her her ability to handle things was just zero tolerance, you know. And so anything that just seemed to aggravate her in the slightest way, she would fly off the handle. And, of course, it would affect her physically because she couldn't handle flying off. She couldn't handle that, such an intense feelings of um, anger because it would manifest in her body. So we were concerned that she would have a heart attack, that she would have, um, you know, strokes because she was quite often having these strokes, you know. These little mini strokes, right? But it would—it was not a good thing. And so, you know, we don't want to spend our lives like that. Absolutely not. And uh, we have to be careful so we don't allow our anger to help, to affect us physically as well. I mean, I've gotten so angry before at certain people in my family that, I mean, I thought I was going to have a heart attack. You know, just my heart just can just really couldn't take it because of the intense emotions behind the anger. Right? It's not getting angry. Angry is a normal, natural response. It's how we allow it to affect us and other people around us. That's that's what's going on here. So it's okay to be angry. It's not okay to take it to the extremes, abuse people, um, you know, these distorted, perverted uh, perversions of anger, which is what, you know, Dave Decker's really talking about here. So really, you know, we have to be careful, <clears throat> you know, not to allow ourselves to be destroyed by this um, inability to handle ourselves we, you know there's there's ways to get help with this we don't have to suffer in this and be these angry people that just are sick all the time because of it stomach aches headaches you know chest pain back aches and, and cardiovascular problems heart attacks strokes and things like that you know my mom would get so mad especially when she was in her late well mid 60s when you know before i moved away and, and left the whole abusive family behind um you know that she would get so upset, and we she'd already had strokes and heart attacks, and we were concerned that she would die the next time she got upset. You know, because honestly, she was just so violent. You know, even at that age, she was still wanting to be violent, and you know, it was just her nature. And so, you know, I'd be like, "You've got to calm down. You know, this is not worth getting upset about." And she would just lose it, just lose it. You know, and I was already almost thirty years old. And, I was like, and then I'd be stressing out because I'd be like, look, I've had enough of this. So, you know, we were, I mean, it was bad. It was really, really bad. And uh, no one should be living like that. I can't, to me, I decided, I said, you know, as an adult, I really want a good life. I don't want to spend my life all angry and, you know, violent like that anymore. You know, I'm so tired of it. So, you know, we have to work on these things. If if, if you're experiencing this stuff, it really is your responsibility to um, make the decisions that you need to make. Uh, to allow yourself to work through this stuff and to to heal from all this, right? It's very important. Um, I'm glad I made that decision. I really am. First of all, I'm glad I made the decision to stick it out and stay around. Uh, and, you know, I figured, hey, you know, I can do this. You know, other people are doing this, and, and, and I can do it too. And But we do need help sometimes, right? So if you need help with this, get some help. There's no shame in that. The shame lies with the abusers for not getting help, right, and taking their garbage out on us, right? 
So another way we can tell if anger is a problem in our life is when it leads to guilt, remorse, shame, and low self-esteem, and this is a big one. Intense anger often leads to saying and doing things that you end up regretting later. It also may lead to some very real consequences and losses, for example, getting divorced from your partner, having less time with your children. These sorts of, sorts of changes inevitably affect in a ne- negative way how you feel about yourself. So, you know, anger, you know, when it's a problem, leading to guilt, remorse, shame, and low self-esteem. I mean, this is just it. You know, I was talking about this sort of yesterday. It was kind of what what I was talking about with my family, like my sister, the fact that we don't know how to talk to each other when we're upset. We're fine. As long as everything's fine, we're okay. But the minute something happens between us, we've never been able to sit down and talk it out. We have to get into a screaming match. When we were younger, we'd get into a boxing match and beat each other up, you know. Um, she would always win. She was five years older than me and a lot bigger, but... You know, we used to duke it out and physically fight, right? Um, then when we got older, it was all just verbal, you know, and then yelling and screaming matches, right? And uh, even today, we still have the potential to blow up and, and just explode on each other and say stupid things, you know, and uh, hurtful things, <clears throat> which I'm always the one to say, okay, you know, I recognize that I've said things that have hurt people, um, you know, but other people don't always necessarily do that, right? Like, she has never, ever said uh, that she's ever said anything wrong, or in her mind, she's perfect, right? And she would deny that, but it's so true, because we had a screaming match a few years ago, back when my dad actually came to visit us. Uh, actually, my, my sister was um, living up here. My dad came up to visit for like two weeks, and or I don't know how long he was here, but anyway, he ended up staying with her that for just for a short, short period of time. It was just a quick visit, I think, if I can remember correctly, but it's been a, a few years and we got into some sort of a, a screaming match over something that I said that was kind of rude. And really all she really should have said was, look, I, I need an apology from you. Um, you said this and it hurt my feelings and um, and I'm I'm upset with it. And I think that you owe me an apology and you should be careful what you're saying. And really it didn't, it didn't go that way. It, we went absolutely crazy on each other in the car and started screaming and ranting and raving for an hour, you know, just at the top of our lungs. And ne- neither one of us was listening to the other one because we were both screaming and we were both so pissed off and angry that, um, you know, that is... And then later on, you're sitting back and you're thinking, man, that's horrible. You know what I mean? Like, um, this it's like you say things that you know you wouldn't have said, you know what I mean, if you would have thought about it. And she said a lot of stuff to me that it was just so stupid um, that I was just like, you've got to be kidding. You know what I mean? Like... You're, she was blowing the whole thing out of proportion. All we had was an argument, and, she, and all, pretty soon before I knew it, I was the one that did not love her. I was the one that did not love Kimberly um, and all this stuff, which is just not true. So her daughter, that's my niece, right? So she blew it way out of proportion, and, and I tend to do that too, see? So the two of us have a real problem with that. Then later on, we sit back and we're kind of saying, that's, that's horrible, you know. I myself do regret a lot of that stuff and have a lot of guilt because of it because... I don't mean to hurt people. I don't mean to say hurtful things. See? But she doesn't have remorse or guilt or sh- or any of that because she doesn't care. It's all about her. See, So she never sits back and says, man, I should check my own behavior too. Um, it's always my fault. Like she, she blames, she's like my mom. She blames everybody around her. She's exactly like my mom, right, uh, as far as that goes. Not taking responsibility for her own actions. Not realizing that what she says hurts people as well. She's been hurting me her whole, she's she's been hurting me her whole life, my whole life, right? Because she was five years older, and she was never a good sister to me. She was always pushing me out. Uh, she built a wall around my bed so that I couldn't uh, have any portion of the bedroom except for my bed, and she was um, psychologically abusive to me as well as physical physically abusive towards me. And she used to make fun of me. Um, she'd make she used to get her friends to laugh at me. Uh, these horrible things, and hey, I can forgive some of that. She was a kid, I was a kid, it's like, okay, whatever. But now as an adult, let's have some respect, you know? So I put my foot down, but the thing is, is anger anger like that can really cause, you know, like they're saying, getting divorced and, and stuff like that because of our anger issues escalating so out of control, and then later on we're sitting back looking at that and we're going, why did we let it get to that, you know? Look at all the horrible things that I've done and said, and uh, it could have been avoided. So it does lead to some guilt, and it can lead to remorse and shame and then low self-esteem and everything else. Um, but, you know, I mean, I've done things and said things to people in the past that were very hurtful, and of course I feel bad about it, you know? 
it really was out of uh, was out of context, and it wasn't that person didn't deserve that, you know. And that's what I'm saying. We all have to be accountable for our own behaviors. Um, the minute somebody says to me that they don't do stuff like that and never have, I'm looking at them going, uh, okay. <laughs> You're just not looking at the reality, the truth of it, right? See, a lot of people don't like to look at their own behavior. They only like to point fingers at other people, right? And if you're ever going to get to the truth of anything uh, and fix things and make things better, then you have to, everybody involved has to look at their own behavior as well. And so, you know, I, I find it funny when people try to pretend like they're perfect. It's like, no, I don't think so, because everybody has been involved in that kind of stuff. We've all done it. And I can't imagine one person on the planet not 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 relating to this information, right? The next one says, when it anger is a problem, when it leads to throwing, hitting, or breaking things. That's a serious issue. Intense anger can lead to make, making choices to destroy objects and property that are important to you and others. This not only costs money, but these behaviors are also threatening to those around you and create fear in the people you care about. And, I mean, that's how I grew up, right? My parents were always throwing, especially my mom, was always throwing things and breaking things, um, busting things. Of course, my dad was kind of, you know, he, he was it's not like he wasn't capable of doing that, but my mom was more apt to do it, um, throwing dishes and breaking things. And, you know, it's uh, when you grow up like that, it, it does cause a lot of fear. And so, and then you take that on and I started doing that so then I was always throwing things and uh, breaking things and hitting right as a, as a young child I was quite often hitting my friends if I didn't like something that they did you know I would I would hit them especially if they broke my stuff like sometimes you know it would be an accident and I'd still slap them across the face you know um, because my, my parents taught me how to do that right they taught me how to abuse people so uh, throwing things hitting you know it, when it, anger comes to that there's a problem you know, it's like I know that sometimes in therapy, you know, as far as what I've seen out there, they suggest punching a pillow, you know. Um, if you're that angry and you got to let some of that out, punch a pillow, you know, punch your bed, punch your mattress, you know, don't break things and bust things and cause people a lot of fear around you, right? That's the whole issue is like this does affect people. Uh, people think, oh, well, it's my own thing. How could it affect somebody else? Well, have you ever been in a room with people throwing things around and breaking things and yelling and shouting and hitting people? <laughs> you know, I mean, if anybody listening to my show who's a survivor would, would probably know exactly what that's all about as far as if there was a lot of violence in the home. Um, but that's a horrible way to grow up. It's a horrible way to live your adult life, right? So I had to stop doing that, and I didn't stop doing that until I was in my 30s. And um, now I don't do that stuff anymore, right, because I got a grip on it. I got control on it. But um, it took me, you know, to somebody else to show me my behavior before I recognized. But I didn't even realize what I was doing. I just thought, I mean, I was, I knew what I was doing. I was breaking dishes and cursing and just acting like my mom, right? And um, I was so mad, I just wanted to slam a whole bunch of dishes in the sink, right? So I was so angry. And, you know, that's how I my, I watched my parents handle things, and so I just did that too. It was just a natural thing for me to do. And my partner was like, you know, what are you doing? You know, that's just, I don't want to be around that. If you're going to behave like that, you know, look what you're doing. And I was just like, well, oh, I guess, you know, yeah, this is just one way, this is my way of handling it. And he's like, well, that's wrong, you know. And so he was really upset by my behavior because he didn't grow up in a home where people were throwing things and hitting people and breaking things, you know. Um, he didn't grow up around that. He grew up in a pretty loving home, and so he he was kind of shocked at my behavior, and uh, you know told me that's not cool. You know, <laughs> so I I had to work on you know not doing that. And here's the biggest one I think: anger is a problem when it leads to emotional, verbal, physical, and sexual abuse. You know, intense anger and the hostile and negative thinking that co accompanies it sets a stage for acting out the anger in an aggressive and violent way towards other people. These kinds of actions are never helpful in, ad in addressing important issues and resolving problems between you and others. In addition, they always create fear, resentment, mistrust, and emotional distance in the relationships that you have. Um, you know, that's the whole issue. Um, abuse, you know, I, to me it's like because of what my dad is, is really still living. He, my abuser dad is still living, right? He's 87 years old, and I will never be able to really have the feelings that uh, like a father-daughter should have, you know, this love and this understanding and this um, this compassion and, and, you know, 
these deep feelings that kind of run through families, I guess, if they're if they're functioning and they're happy and everybody just loves each other. I'll never be able to really have that for my dad because in the background I know what he did and I know what he did to my mom and I know what he did to us and it it's always there. It's like you know, okay, I've had to to learn to to deal with it and, and you know if I want to have maintain a relationship with him, which I kind of you know I have a hard time doing because he's psychologically ill. He's mentally ill, right? He's got uh, well, he's borderline schizophrenic, which most people would say he's actually schizophrenic, but I th- he was diagnosed borderline schizophrenic, so. Um, you know, he, he there's always that stuff in the background that, you know, keeps me from having that real bond with him, right? Because as a as a young child watching what he did to my family and watching and, and then what he did to me, you know, it's kinda like uh that's always gonna be there, you know. And I choose to remember, so it, I guess if I chose to forget then um hey, we could all pretend none of that happened, but since I'm choosing to remember, um it's I, I don't you know, it's almost like we'll never have that 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 father daughter relationship that we should have had. You know, and it's like my mom. She she passed away what, about fifteen years ago, and she we would never ever be able like I would never be able to really have that mother daughter bond with her as much as I wanted it because I really loved my mom. But um, you know what she had done to me was it was just so hurtful. You know, and just watching what what she did to the family, what she did to herself, and what she did to us. So that's the whole issue. It it really this you know emotional abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse. It changes the whole thing, and it changes it for good. Now, can people heal and and move forward? I absolutely believe that is absolutely true. And I think like if my dad had said, look, you know, you know, even five or ten years ago, said, look, I want to get all the children that are still living together because I have something to say to you guys, you know, and you know, if he would have actually made a, a, uh, an attempt to, first of all, acknowledge what he did and then say, I can't make it right, but what I can do is we can start right now being a real family and let's get some counseling, you know. And if all the, you know, whoever in the family wanted to go along with it and whoever didn't, well, whatever, but there's not that many of us left. So um, we might not have wanted to, but at least we would know, hey, he really cares and he really wanted to make things right. You know, but in his mind, life is just great. He doesn't think about what he did to my mom. He thinks there's nothing wrong with what he did to my mom. See, because he thinks it's okay to rape your wife, right? I mean, that, that uh, the reason I say it like that is because that's exactly what it is—marital rape, right? And I, I experienced, I watched it. I, I mean, he, they, the, 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 the bugger raped my mom in front of me. So that's the whole issue, you know. Um, he thinks that that's okay. Hey, no problem. You're married to a woman. You just force her to have sex when she doesn't want to, and it doesn't matter that she's trying to batter you to get to get you off of her. You know, um, it's all good. Part of the deal. You know, um, you know. This is it makes me sick to my stomach that uh, he thinks it's okay, and so does my family. My sister thinks it's all right. I told her, you know, and and she knows, right? She grew up in the home too, and everybody's just in this nice little fantasy world of denial, you know. And it's like so, you know, he's still very very sick, and this whole issue of abuse that was just in my own personal situation, it did cause a lot of resentment, a lot of mistrust, and, and a lot of emotional distance. It, it caused a distance that there, I don't think there's any way to come back to, to, to get around that because they pushed the distance was from when I was a baby. I don't have that connection with my parents, you know, that most people would have that that real feeling that, hey, these people loved me, these people wanted me. Uh, these two people brought me in the world and actually wanted me. That's great. And, you know, did their best, right? I mean, I will never know what that's like to have parents who want you and don't hurt you, right? Because my parents hurt us all. And, uh, you know, there's no way, I mean, unless I want to pretend and live in a fantasy world, which is what my sister does, um, you know, which I choose to live in reality and truth, right? So uh, that's the truth. So I have to then I have to deal with it, right? If I'm going to face the truth, then I have to learn how to uh, to deal with it so that it is uh, manageable, right? And so that's where I'm at in my healing journey. It's kind of like, well, let's just move forward at you know a little bit at a time and and go through this stuff that we need to go through. And like if you're having a hard time, and, and we have about a minute left here, so you know, if you're having a hard time and you're just not um, you know, coping well and whatever, make sure you reach out and, you know, tell someone. Contact a crisis line if you have to. Um, you know, get a hold of adult survivor groups and find out what you can do to get some help, right? Uh, don't suffer in silence. That is so sad. 
Um, you know, if you feel like you just can't cope, you know, you pick up the phone and you call somebody. You call a crisis line or somebody. There's people out there like you and me who really care about people, and that's the only reason why they're doing that, because they, otherwise, why would they? Um, and they are really a good shoulder, and, you know, they they can possibly lead you into to some real help, right? So make sure that you reach out. You know, get some help, right? Never give up. Never, ever give up. You know, I hear lots of survivors and advocates saying that, and it's just so true, right? Never give up. Um, that's not that's not the answer, right? We can find the answers. And so this information is very, very helpful. Um, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And I'll be back on tomorrow morning. I'll be back on, actually, tonight, uh, Dreamcatchers Talk Radio, as well as my own show. So we'll catch you later this week, and I'll be back on tomorrow morning, same time, same place. So have a great day, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.